Our last bush conversion video was a little tame. It consisted of larger gear and wheels. This time though, we went all out. The first thing we wanted to do was add some larger tires because the original provided ones looked a little puny. We had to drill out the original axle holes to get the larger axles to fit and accommodate the Flex Innovation Cessna 170 tires. These were nearly twice the size of the originals. If we're being honest, wheels don't really change the way a plane flies, so while I was wrapping up the wheels, Ben went ahead and started designing some full span slots. He first cut out some slot support pieces to give the slots something to mount to. These were extremely precise cuts. We then took some hot glue and slapped five of them on each wing. Then, Ben cut, measured, and glued each slot onto the support pieces. Meanwhile, I started working away at adding flapperons. To make these work, we had to open the all-in-one wing connectors to unplug the aileron cables so they could be plugged into the receiver separately. Next, we changed the model type to dual aileron with one flap, set up a mix with flaps to ailerons, and then we're back in business. Just like the full-scale Beaver. It was time to head off to Eagles for some initial flight testing. I started off by doing a high-speed taxi to make sure I still felt like I had control over the plane. I need a lot of up elevator trim. Did you notice that with the T28? Not off the top of my head. Okay, it's a good start. Right, it needs a lot of up elevator. Really? Yeah. I am not an engineer. I will not pretend to know why. I know why. Oh yeah, why? Yeah, I'm taking. Yeah, we're gonna cut here. Ben, honorary armchair engineer, had absolutely no clue what he was talking about. However, our not armchair engineer friend, Adam, does know what he's talking about. He noted that adding the slots effectively added camber to our wing. It lowered the point where air splits to go over the wing versus under it, AKA the stagnation point. More camber usually means more nose down force generated by the wing in level flight. Day one of testing concluded by doing various high altitude maneuvers to figure out what would happen when the critical angle of attack was exceeded. I also brought it down low to do some high alpha passes, and I was definitely impressed, but you can probably tell the plane was having some stability issues. Boy. In addition, thanks to the slots, we also noticed the expected sluggish roll control, especially at higher angles of attack. This is because the slots add more wing area, which makes the wing resist rotation, aka roll damping, and requires the ailerons to work harder to roll the now larger wing. For those wondering about slots, what they do is allow higher pressure air to flow from the underside of the wing's leading edge through the slot and into the lower pressure air moving over the top of the wing. This adds energy to the boundary layer, which helps the air remain more attached on top of the wing at higher angles of attack. Think Zenith 701, for example. After these initial test flights, I met up with Cody the following day and had him try out the Beaver. Cody has years of experience designing aircraft for name brand companies, so we figured he'd have a better idea as to what was going on. I started off by getting warmed up. Oh shit! <laughs> now that I was warmed up, we started the day by giving him a demo. <laughs> okay, Cody's turn for real. Almost immediately, he also noted the sluggish roll control in addition to the adverse yaw and stability issues. After some initial thoughts, You told me it was really, really good. I'm just gonna leave it there. Oh. Uh, Cody had an idea. Maybe if you took all the hot glue strings off, that would... That would definitely help. Answer. In an attempt to address the subpar roll control, we took Cody's advice and made a poor man's kit fox aileron, or in this case, a bileron? We know how to build, we promise. We promise. The idea here is that by adding the second aileron, not only are we doubling the aileron area, we are approximating a kind of double element surface. Theoretically, cleaner air is going over the second aileron at higher angles of attack. That was done, but we still needed to fix our stability issues. At high angles of attack, yaw, aka directional stability, is compromised for two reasons. One, we have the same size tail surfaces for a now larger wing. And two, the fuselage and wing partially blanket the stabilizers and tail control surfaces, especially at high angles of attack. This means less directional stability and rudder authority, especially when flying slower. So, we did Cody's suggested fix and added a totally beautiful ventral fin under the belly behind the CG. Up next, it was off to a nearby field where we started putting Cody's mods to the test. <laughs> Overall, we found that while there was somewhat of an improvement, saying that this made the plane definitively more stable at higher angles of attack was a bit of a reach. Before we went out to do some legit forested confined bush flying, we went to the Eagles one more time to try some real-world short landing testing. Whoa, whoa! 
and by real-world testing, we mean the soup landing test. Ooh. That seems fine to me. We were out of ideas for how to improve the soup landing testing aspect of the aircraft, shy of maybe considering learning to land it better, just a thought. If you have any ideas, please let us know below. Either way, there was one complaint we had with the Beaver that the slots didn't fix that we actually knew how to fix. Ground roll. Now an arguably more correct way to fix this would be to move the gear back a few inches so that we could get the tail up quicker, but sometimes rockets just make more sense. Excuse me? I put a lot of work into that. Yeah, bullshit. We secured a rocket to each of the landing gear legs using duct tape and attached our totally legit fuses into the rockets while we feared for our lives. Please get They're both gone? You can see there is a little bit of, you know, meltage going on on the foam there, a little bubbling, but nothing too bad. To conclude testing, it was time to once and for all take her into some legit forested bush flying. With localized showers quickly approaching, we hopped onto our e-bikes and took to a forest nearby. While you watch some bush flying, ultimately, Ben and I noted that despite the slots and other aerodynamic band-aids we added to the plane, making turns at high angles of attack with the Stoll Beaver was always easier if we unloaded the wings slightly with some down elevator while giving aileron and rudder inputs. This ensured that we had good, attached air over the top of the ailerons, especially at high angles of attack throughout the turns. We have no definitive way to prove this, but it worked for us. Overall, we were really happy with the mods we made and learned a lot along the way. Now, the grand finale, intense bush flying. The first spot we went to was a classic from our Fun Cub bush flying video. We figured it'd be a good test to try it in the same confines. We'll see how this goes. It was much tamer with the smaller and floatier Fun Cub, but the Beaver? My sphincter was slammed shut like a bear trap. If you watched our review on the E-Flight Slow Ultra Stick, you'll probably remember this spot and what happened to the landing gear on the stick. If the stick could do it, the beaver can too, right? Before I said it would be the end of the plane, I really am pretty confident this will be the end of the plane now. We're gonna keep challenging ourselves until it breaks. So we're gonna take off here, avoid the stump, immediate right turn between the trees over the open river here. And then I'm gonna have to somehow to swing it right to land through right towards us. Do you wanna stand on that? Oh, Jesus. Bush flying without some uphill landings and downhill takeoffs. So we did that. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> If you'd like to ruin your own beaver, our affiliate link can be found in the description below. Feel free to give this video a like if you'd enjoy seeing more of my bushy beaver on the channel, and trust us, we have ideas. Or maybe even consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing us scratch build our own bush plane. As a quick community update, congrats to Loading Toast for winning our April photo contest on our Discord with this awesome shot of their fun cup. If you want to participate, join our Discord for a fun supportive community and submit your best shots there. The winner gets a free limited edition sticker, has their photo featured in a video, and in an annual Tail Heavy community calendar. As always, happy landings and bounce one on for us. We'll catch you next week with a new upload. We should be insulted. We should not buy those batteries because they've said that, because they've lied so boldly and they've treated us like we're morons.